Hey everybody, welcome back. We're here in St. Martin, Princess Juliana International Airport. We're going to take a look today at the new NVIDIA Driver 560.70. Got a couple interesting things to bring you about this one, uh, including what NVIDIA says about uninstalling the driver or rolling the driver back. And I've also got a little bit of channel news. Got some, got a variety of things today. So let's go uh, external power supply on, rotating beacon on, mixtures and props full forward, master and battery switches on, go open the fuel valves, go fuel pumps on, mags on left, let's see, did we forget anything? Crack the throttle, let's take a look outside, make sure there's nobody out there to kill or maim. And the right engine first is a good start. Oil pressure is coming up, so we'll max them both. The left prop is clear. Good start. Oil pressure coming up, we'll go max them both. Close the start with cover, fuel pumps off, check the fuel pressures. Fuel pressures are looking good. Avionics Master coming on. Throttle us back just a little bit. They sound a little racy. Alright, we'll go nav and strobe lights on. Set the altimeter. Transponder squawk altitude. Lean mixtures for taxi. Now we're going to do real world ops today. So, first of all, let's talk about the driver. So, I. Updated the driver two days ago, and the, the first day it came out. And I was going to release this video yesterday, but a couple things happened. Number one, there was the update to the Big Maps mod. And number two, um, I originally didn't clear the caches when I updated this driver. And then I decided it was a good idea to do that and so I cleared the caches and once when you clear the caches you've got to do a little bit of flying toes on the brakes release the parking brake one notch of flaps for takeoff you've got to give the uh, the caches a couple days to or not a couple days a couple like maybe an hour or so of flying to rebuild so I had to wait and let that happen and so I just wasn't quite ready to do the I just didn't feel like I had an honest you know shot at looking at the driver so I don't know what's going to happen today I don't know what my conclusion is going to be um, so we will uh, we'll, we'll We'll look, we're literally just looking at it in real time. Um, what we're going to do today, I'll go over this real quick. We're going to go, so this is real world ops. We're in, in the Anguilla Air Services livery of the Britain Norman Islander. Um, and we're going to go from Princess Juliana to St. Bart's. Now, in the in St. Martin, the only carriers that can leave St. Martin and fly directly to St. Bart's are... Win Air and SXM Airways. They will not let any other carrier do it, which is your typical Caribbean kind of protectionism stuff. And so, in order to fly from uh, St. Martin to St. Bart's, if you are not from St. Martin, which we are not, you have to fly from St. Martin to Anguilla and then to St. Bart's. So, and that'll give us a little bit of time uh, to to check out the driver. Let me do my pre-race fidgeting here. And we're ready to go. Final approach course looks clear. I've got live traffic enabled. Alright, so mixtures and props full forward. Let's go landing light on, taking the active runway. The question is, where are you taking it? If you ever hear somebody say that in the radio, taking the active, where are you taking it? Can, can you leave it where it is so that the rest of us can use it? There is no such thing as taking the active. I mean, let, let's say winds are light and variable, right? 
or Windsor four knots crosswind. Which one's the active? So if you don't don't say that. Tell people what runway you're using. All right, heading indicator checks with the runway number. Fuel pumps are not on. That's why you do pre landing take uh, pre takeoff checklist. All right, fuel pumps are on. Flaps are set. Mixtures and props full forward. Take off power coming in. Take off power is set. Right rotor keep us on the center line. 60 knots, 70 knots, and rotate must be an east wind today. I will let that nose drop to 90. Oh yeah, the, that's the other thing. I am using the big, the big maps mod today. Uh, no, actually, you know what? I take that back. I didn't start it. So there you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, I may do a follow-up video to that today because there's uh, some lack of understanding in terms of bring the flaps up. Lack of understanding in terms of the uninstall process and here's here's the short story uninstall it via the add remove program in Windows and if you have any trouble you use my suggestion read the manual I put the link in the description of the video read the manual it's in there the answer's in there it over. Fuel pumps off, fuel pressures are okay. A thousand feet is what we're looking for today. Channel news. I ordered <laughs> Amazon Prime Day. I ordered a new microphone yesterday. I'm use what I use is a, it's just a Sennheiser headset. And one thing, one consistent piece of feedback that I've got over the over the over time is that my microphone is no good. I mean, I think it could be better. I think it's all right. But, you will now hear my mellow tones through what I think should be a pretty good mic setup, which is good. So I've done uh, this exact flight in real life. I did it with my buddy who flies Islanders in the Caribbean, and we did exactly this. We had to go, <laughs> he had to go from Willow to St. Martin, and than the St. Bart's, but in the Caribbean, it's not that easy. So he had to go from Aguila to St. Martin. So he had to, he had to go from Aguila to St. Martin, from St. Martin back to Aguila, and then from Aguila to St. Bart's. And actually, the, the Aguila to St. Martin, the St. Martin to Aguila, and the Aguila to St. Bart's routes are all on my page, all on my YouTube channel. So you can watch all those fights if you want to. And I actually booked a flight. I actually booked a flight in this exact airplane for. Five weeks from now, we're heading to Aquila August 24th, and we'll be flying to St. Martin to Aquila in the Britain Norman Islander.
place. First notch of collapsing. And we'll do the real the real VFR approach here that they do. It's right down the, uh, there's a road. What they do is they come right down this road. This road in front of us. Right down this road. Arm flaps are set. Extras and props forward. Let's go right down this road. Just watching that airspeed. I don't want the airspeed to drop. I don't want. I'm a little bit high, that airspeed drops, we're going to hit the ground hard, we land here. So now we're good, we need a little bit more energy actually, and now we're doing just fine, power, power back, whoops, yeah, that was a bit of a blue, that was a terrible movie, mixtures and props full four of gold. Up on one notch of flaps, got the flaps in. Takeout power coming in, trim is okay. Airspeed is alive. 70 knots, that was a terrible landing. Say hello to Aquila. I need knots here. That was atrocious. It was pretty jumpy in there. Uh, power back to 25, props back to 2500. Start a turnout here. Got some little, maybe a couple little hesitations right there. Airspeed is good to bring the flaps up. Little, a couple little hesitations. There, we'll see. I don't know if I would quite qualify them as stutters quite yet. We'll see what the rest of this flight looks like. It's a little jumpy down in there. That that short final in there would be. Uh, Finally, the end angle could be a little tricky. 1,000 feet AGL fuel pumps coming off. Fuel pressures are good. Alright, 50 feet lower cruise altitude, bring the power back, bring the props back. Oh, is it over? And we should be good to go. 1,500 feet. So this right here, this this bigger kind of half semi-circle, weird, weird uh, airspace structure there, that is the class Charlie around Princess Juliana Airport. And 
then what does Class Charlie mean? Class Charlie is cutting just at airspace. Lots of airplanes in Class Charlie, that's a controlled airfield, usually has usually has approach control, radar guided approach control. Um, and in order to enter Charlie Class C airspace, you have to communicate. You have to be in contact with air traffic control to enter Charlie airspace. Now, what does that mean to communicate? You call up Class Charlie, you call up approach, you say, St. Martin approach, uh, Victor Pop Alpha Alpha Charlie, you know, inbound, uh, inbound Juliana, and they say, Victor Pop Alpha Alpha Charlie, stand by, you have made contact. So you are allowed to enter that airspace. If they say, Victor Pop Alpha Alpha Charlie, remain clear of the class Charlie airspace, then you cannot enter that airspace. But as long as you make, as long as you establish two-way two radio communication with them in the class Charlie, you can enter that airspace. Now, what is this right here? This is what is called the VFR corridor. This is uh, Grand Cass Airport right there. Grand Cass Airport is right here. Grand Cass Airport is the airport on the French side of St. Martin. St. Bart's down here is French as well. And you can see this is this whole airspace is inside the class Charlie for Princess Juliana. So what they've done, that's Grand Cass right there. Right here. So what they've done is they've established what they call a VFR corridor between Grand Cass and St. Bart's. So all this airspace right here, if you are VFR and below 2,500 feet, you are good to go. You don't have to worry about the Class Charlie for Princess Juliana. And that just allows uh, traffic to get back and forth between Grand Cass and St. Bart's without bothering Juliana. The day I made this flight in real life is exactly what it looked like. We were just below kind of a scuzzy, uh, scuzzy overcast or a scuzzy broken layer. Um, so anyway, I'm babbling. The as far as the driver goes, my opinion is that this one is smoother than. 560.12, which is the last one. There was 555.9 something, which was, there's 555.85 or 0.84, which was great. There was 555.9 something, which was terrible. And then there was 560.12, which was good but it was a little it was smooth but it was a little jerky to me see the sim seemed a little bit reactive if that's if that makes any sense to say whereas this one i feel very very smooth very very uh yeah just very smooth Uh, St. Eustatius over there about our 2 o'clock about our 1 o'clock is St. Kitts and right over here is St. Uh, Sabo
this little island right here, this is Forche, that's actually privately owned, believe it or not. I forget what this one's called. Um, you gotta watch yourself because if you get too far over to the uh, to the right here, you can get out of the quarter, which I just about am. What you really should do is just aim right for Forche, it'd be good. There's, uh, I don't think you can see it, but uh, Antigua is just down, just south down here. Another fun play. St. Kitts, there's Nevis. Alright, so. So far, so good on the driver. I have to say. Uh, no, 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 So, when the wind is less than 10 knots, they usually fly the runway 28 approach. Even if it's a tailwind. So my buddy tells me when we did it, there was, the wind was less than 10 knots, but he flew the 1 0 approach because he knew I wanted to see it. Right at fifteen hundred feet. Air feels active today, and what they usually do is they'll look over here at the at the sailboats in the harbor, and they'll see which way they're pointing, and that's going to tell you already which way the wind is blowing. Doesn't feel too strong today. If it's a strong easterly wind, you'll get blown to the right just coming over here to Sugarloaf. We get blown right a little bit, which means we're going to have a, a headwind on the final, which is good. So I'll bring some more power out, hold that altitude. Slowing an airplane down, bring out the power, maintain altitude. That will slow down your aeroplane. Uh, and I've got some good back pressure here on the yoke. What I'll do is I'll put that next notch of flaps in and make the turn in and I'll let the, let the nose drop. But I'm going to hold it right at 80 knots. Hold it right at 80 knots because that's the air spin I'm on. Alright, mixtures and props flow forward. Fuel pumps are on, flaps are set. That's the airspeed I want, 80 knots. That little island right in there is called Large Island. <laughs> this little one right here. We want to be at right about 800 feet at Large Island, which is not large by the way. So, let's 
start. We started getting a little bit floaty with descending, so I pulled some power out. Now we're, I feel like we've got a decent headwind, so we're kind of getting not low, lower than I'd like to be. So we get in a little closer. In this, at this airport, it's always better to be a little bit higher than a little bit low. 800 feet, we're good. The speed's starting to come down here, so we're bringing some power. So we must have a decent headwind. As long as my airspeed is good, I'm good. Alright, you see that nose coming up a little bit, that's what I don't want. Alright. Yeah, a little bit left to right to that way. Don't want the speed coming up and I don't want the nose coming up. Definitely. See where we're pointed compared to where we're going. Alright, now we can start coming out some power. Yeah, look at this. Alright, now we can really start coming out with some power. Oh, uh, drop some speed there, that's not good. That was, that's a go around. <laughs> that really was curious. <laughs> the video just got longer. I positive rate of climb, we're going to have more notch and flaps. I power back to 25. Back to 25, we'll come around here. Heading 060. Yeah, that was uh That was a bit squirrely. Yeah, the, I should have gone around earlier than I did. What what sealed it for me? What sealed that decision was the airspeed. <laughs> Looking down, when you, when your when your descent rate is high and your airspeed is low, that is a poor combination. What that means is you're running out of energy. High airspeed, high descent rate, not such a big deal. No big deal at all, actually. You can just pull, just pull power out, and or pull the nose up. Uh, really, just pull the nose up. Uh, we'll bring the power back to 21. The props back. To Buddy who does this literally on a daily basis, he says he tries St. Bart's once. If he doesn't get in the first time, he doesn't try it again. Now, bear in mind, this guy could land an island on a dime. I mean, he is. He is amazing. So if he can't get it in, you can't get it in. It can't be done. If I can't get it in, yeah, you can do it. <laughs> you can still do it. Alright, there's the one zero here. 
on our left hash mark. So we're a good base here towards Sugarloaf. That brings some more power out. Alright, we'll go a few pumps on. Power to 17, maintain altitude. That should bring the speed back into the white arc. And let's take a quick look down final. Let's take a quick uh, Drivers look great, by the way. Drivers look really good. Now we got blown to the left, so what I'm going to do. right before the run they call it the slot and it really gets jumpy in there of course now I feel like I'm getting blown to the left of this. alright so that descent rate drops so let's pull the nose up a little bit and get back to 80 here And that's actually exactly why my previous approach is exactly why you want, you'd rather be a little bit too high than too low because if you get into trouble, getting out of trouble is easier. If you if you come in high and you come in with a steep descent rate and a good airspeed, you've got energy. If you come in low and your and your airspeed is low, you don't have energy. And it's going to take all your engine power to get out of there if you get in trouble. Alright, now 80 knots. 80 knots. Uh 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 uh. One zero is dropping here. Uh huh. I know it this time though. I know it this time. Alright, now power's all the way out. I knew it this time. Alright. That speed started to drop and I was on it. Oof. Not gonna be pretty this time. It's just gonna touch it right down. There you go. Look at that wind. Yeah, I wasn't gonna try to be pretty about that one. See, right. Right before we got into that slot, the airspeed dropped again. Probably that air just blowing through that chute real hard. Airspeed dropped. And, uh, just gonna lean the mixtures. But I was ready for it at that time. I just jammed the throttles forward for about three seconds. And as soon as the airspeed came back, As soon as the airspeed came back, I just pulled the power straight to idle. And I had to wrestle with that. I mean, that was that wasn't anything I'd I'd do in real life. But well, I mean, I don't I don't think it was necessarily unsafe, but certainly wasn't comfortable. <laughs> Certainly would not have been comfortable to be in the airplane in real life on that approach. Especially as a passenger. Your passengers have been it a, it a, it a gone straight from the underwear store. So they got on the ground. So I'm landing like coming off. Clear the runway. Flaps coming up. Yeah, they were going straight from the underwear store. Off. 
Those are legit here, those those airplanes. They've got live traffic on. And Air Caribbean does fly in here. And ATRs, ATR 42s. Alright. Mixtures to idle, cut off. Throttles to idle. Parking brake set. Lights coming off. Avionics master coming off. Come up top. Two pumps are off. Mags off. And let's see, lights are all off. Master and battery switches off. And down here we'll go chocks and boarding steps. And we'll go doors. And there we are, not a bad parking job either. So, um, my general take on the driver is it's good. Uh, I think it's better than uh, 560.12, I think it was the last one, because I think this one's a little bit smoother. Performance is good on both of them, but I think it's a little bit smoother, this one, to me. So, I give this driver a thumbs up. Hope you guys enjoyed the flight. And we'll see you soon.